Faye Hatcher. BBC Radio Good Gloucestershire. Good afternoon, it's 1.35. More now on our technology features. More and more of us are turning to different types of tech to stay connected. But what if you're listening to this thinking, I'm struggling to access or work out how to use some of this tech? What can I do? Joining me now is James Beecher from Stroud, who is Research and Development Manager at Citizens Online. This is a leading digital inclusion charity that's celebrating 20 years of helping as many people as possible gain the benefits of using the internet. This is a great time for you, James. Yeah, a very busy time for us. As you say, lots of people are getting into using the internet more than they perhaps have done because it's an opportunity for them to stay connected with friends and family. But it's more than that. It's really essential to be able to get online at the moment. For instance, people who are needing to apply for benefits like universal credit if they've lost their income or if they're wanting to register as in the highest risk groups in order to get supermarket delivery slots and indeed to be able to do online ordering for supermarkets. You kind of have to be online to do those things. But As we know in our charity, around one in every 10 adults in the UK is not a regular internet user. Most of those people have never been online. And beyond that, about one in five adults lack what are defined as essential digital skills by the government. So that means that even though they might be online, people can often struggle to do things like online forms or more complex things online and basically struggle to access the full benefits of using the internet. Sure. So if somebody's listening to this and they're not online, what what can you do as an organisation to help them? The first thing really to say is just to try and make people aware of this as a problem, because a lot of people are probably designing new digital services for their businesses so that people can still access them. And it's important that people consider that not everyone's going to be able to do that easily. So one simple thing is just to retain phone options or obviously there's the radio, which is a great way for people to stay connected and find out information about what's going on. But One thing that's really difficult here is that of those groups of people who are offline, it's actually people who are most at risk for COVID-19 who are also the most likely to be digitally excluded. So people who are older or people who are disabled, they're much less likely to be online. For instance, among disabled people who are over 75, 59% of them, so nearly two in every three people in that age group with a disability, is not an internet user. So that's more than 10 times the rate for adults who aren't disabled on average. So those people can be really cut off from their usual support networks and they're being told to access formal support services through digital means that they don't have necessarily any experience with. One thing to do as individuals if we are online is to be in touch with our friends and family who might be in that situation or our neighbours and it's great to see all these mutual aid networks and other systems that are linking up to make sure neighbours who might be more vulnerable have got someone they can talk to. But there's also things we can do a bit beyond that. So your previous caller Nick She was talking about how you don't have to use these special video conferencing tools. You can use ones which are a bit more fun. And that's true. But one benefit of Zoom and some of the other tools that are specifically designed for video conferencing is that they have screen sharing as one option of something you can do. You can share your screen with someone else. So if you know someone who has got a device but they're not very confident using it, you can share your screen with them to show them how to do something that they don't know how to do at the moment. And even some of those tools allow remote control. So if someone's really struggling, you can actually log onto their computer or their device and do something for them, or at least do it for them the first time. Another thing is that lots of people don't actually have devices. So they might not have smartphones or tablets, laptops. Again, amongst people aged 65 and over, around a third have no PC or laptop in their household and about 40% don't have a smartphone. So it's really worth thinking about this. There are different devices available that are designed for people in those groups. So there's one, noisolation.com, has a one button device, which is very simple, which might be useful for some people in that group who've never used devices like this before. That's great advice, James. You know, I had no idea this is this is all out there. And as we know, the pace of technology is is changing very, very quickly at the moment. And this can be this can be a turn off for some people. I'm just thinking about my own parents. You know, it's like, oh, I don't want yeah. to be bothered with that. And we, we need to kind of just, you know, boost up our friends and family or elderly relatives and, and you know, fill them with confidence and say, look, you can yeah. do this. And just let's talk through this slowly together and we can get there. I mean, it's important to say that when we we talk about digital exclusion, which is a slightly weird phrase, and it's not really something that's easy to measure simply, it's a multifaceted problem. So it's not just about whether or not you've got an internet connection and whether it's fast enough. It's not just about whether you've got a device or not. It's about whether you've got digital skills, whether you've got experience using a wide variety of things. And that includes things like media literacy, you know, an understanding of what is and isn't real, what might be a scam and so on. 
understanding digital security, as Nick was saying. And, you know, that can be quite difficult because that's a turn off for people. The idea that the online world is a very scary place is mm. is a turn off. So it's, it's worth knowing some basic things about that so that you can feel more confident when you when you are online. And as you say, building people's confidence is really important. It's quite difficult for us at the moment because we tend to do a lot of our work, what we call being digital champions, in face-to-face -face settings where it's really easy to build up a rapport with someone and help them slowly build their confidence. But it's difficult, if not impossible, to do that at the moment. And people also can't get to libraries which are closed, where which is where a lot of people were going to get access to devices. So... We do have to do a lot of stuff through phone support and, again, we're in, informally encouraging those around us who are confident using these things to talk to people who feel less confident and really think about how to do that in a kind, friendly way, which is maybe not always how that <laughs> happens in families the rest of the time. Patience. And, um, be very patient, exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, it's worth going back to what Nick was saying. Really think about things that are fun, something, a hook for the other person. So something that they would normally be doing that they currently can't do, but that they might be able to get some version of through the online world. So if they're keen on gardening, they might be able to access a website that has information about gardening or purchase their seeds for their allotment. Or if they're interested in music, you might be able to take them to YouTube and show them some videos of old music that they liked. That's Those are the sorts of things. Think of something that's going to be fun for someone to do rather than just leaping straight to the difficult form that they have to fill in or something like that. James, that's wonderful. Um, your website is really comprehensive as well. Really enjoyed looking at that. Um, so where can people get more information about what you do? Our website is citizensonline.org.uk. So that's citizens as a plural, online.org.uk. And right on the front page there, there's links to three articles we've written. One is a long list of resources for all sorts of people, whether you're comfortable online or not. Lots of ideas for video conferencing, working from home, all that sort of thing. Then we have another page which is about helping people to take their first steps online. So if you're doing that or if you've got a friend who's doing that, that's a really useful page for some ideas of how you can do that and links to another organisation, Digital Unite, who've got lots of guides for how to use specific pieces of software or websites. And then lastly, we have one other thing, which is just that we're, we're at the moment calling on the government and technology companies to do a little bit more than they are doing in terms of helping people and, and make sure that access for everyone is free during this pandemic. And you can read a bit more about why we're saying that on our site as well. James, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. James Beecher from Stroud. He's a digital inclusion researcher with Citizen Online. If you want to get more information, we'll put all the information on our Make a Difference help desk. But uh, the website again, citizensonline.org.uk. 1.43, here are the tramps and Disco Inferno.